and they're going to have to just get up and run with it. But we sure love these young people. We're grateful for them. Bless this evening and the families, the fun, and all that goes on tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, uh, this is our 25th graduating class from our school. And I'm just thinking, that it's been a while. <laughs> Sad part is I've been a part of most of them, uh, feeling old. But uh, I'm sitting there thinking, just as good a bunch, a uh, bunch of young people as we've ever had. And uh, just God has been so very, very gracious to us. And if you're new here and, and don't know us well, uh, we have something unusual going. Uh, we don't know why sometimes. Uh, the Lord's just merciful. And it really is of the Lord's mercies uh, that we have anything that's good. And we want to thank him for being so kind to us. Uh, we have <clears throat> teachers uh, that have been in our school. Miss Ryan's been here the longest. And, uh, but we've got other ones uh, been here a long time also. They, they sacrificed a lot. Uh, if, if you were to look at it financially, <laughs> I would be embarrassed to tell you what they get paid. Uh, uh, they don't, I don't know how they make it sometimes uh, making, uh, financially, but they've chosen to uh, give up uh, opportunities uh, elsewhere, a much, much bigger paycheck, and invest their lives uh, in your young people. Um, I hope you won't forget to thank them and uh, let them know you appreciate what they do. Uh, also, I, I have uh, secretaries that uh, Mrs. Lewis, I don't know if she's in here. She's probably up doing something right now. Um, but Mrs. Lewis is awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm telling you, I told her the other day, I said, uh, you better not die before I do. <laughs> uh, because we would fall apart. I'm, she is an incredible secretary. And we've had uh, some stepping in here and there, but she's been here a long time. Uh, let her know you appreciate what she does. It is a lot going on uh, to run a school. Uh, we, in your, uh, if you didn't get a program, or when the, you know, the programs have been inserted in the tell of our honor rolls. Uh, we have uh, pastor's honor roll and principal's honor roll. Uh, if you get a principal's honor roll, you get all A's and B's. If you get all A's, you get the pastor's honor roll. And we triple, quadruple checked spellings, but I hope we didn't misspell someone's word, a name in there. But those are the kids that made the honor roll. Also in there are uh, kids who uh, got zero demerits. And that's, that's kind of saying something, uh, especially once you hit seventh grade. Uh, uh, especially if you get through your junior high years and not getting a demerit, that's pretty amazing. But uh, you can get demerits just for crossing your eyeballs at the wrong time here on here. But uh, that's a pretty big accomplishment. But we did have one person that was here every single school day, and that's Rachel Pardo. Are you here, Rachel? She's got to be here, I bet she is, because she comes to everything. Really, it's her mother who wanted to get out of the house for a while, but no. Rachel's a great girl, faithfulness, uh, I'd say it's a big thing in the Christian life, being faithful. Uh, uh, we're going to have our graduates come in right now, and so if you want to lean over and snap some photos, that'd be fine, let them come on in. Somehow we must have left one of them out. That's too bad. Why do you have to go, go home today? That's too bad. Uh, each graduation, uh, 
you know, every graduation has a guest speaker, and we're, we do the same thing. So we have uh, brought in a couple of them today. So we could have our guest speakers come in right now. Thought I was by myself for a minute. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate you coming up here. You want man, to be? Ten years. Ten years has been a long time, man. Time flies, man. 2014 was it? so long ago. <sighs> Many time pounds ago, too. So. Uh, oh yeah. As Life's we'll talk about good. in just a minute. So. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, I was thinking about class 2014. Man, those were the days. Weren't those. It? Those memories. <sighs> you know, I was thinking about some of the people, uh, especially Morgan. Man, she was. <laughs> she, just like a blonde, you know? Pretty much. She, I, remember, I remember she went to the doctor one day and uh, she had burnt both of her ears. The doctor's like, what, what happened to your, how did you burn both of your ears? Morgan says, well, somebody called. I accidentally picked up the iron. The doctor's looking and says, okay, well, what happened to the other one? Well, they called back. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's uh, understandable coming from her though, yeah. Completely. I, one time her husband gave me a call and said, she was really frustrated. She kept getting mad and mad, and I guess she was trying to put this puzzle together. She kept saying, it's supposed to be a tiger. It's supposed to be a tiger. Yeah. And he said, Morgan, calm down. Put the Frosted Flakes back in the box. Oh. Uh, <laughs> blonde, very much blonde, very much. Oh, yeah. Too, that was too much, all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Cassie, she's always, for some reason, she was always trying to be a pirate. I didn't, yeah, I didn't uh -huh. understand that. Yeah, I remember that. I don't think anybody did except her, but yeah, I, do, I do have a pirate joke. We'll see if it goes over. So uh, why do pirates wear eye patches? Uh, I don't know. They can't afford iPads? No? No, yeah. it didn't go over. Okay. I should have left that one at home. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, remember the, uh, right at the beginning of the school year, September 2013, I remember Cassie came in, first day of school, went straight to the office, and Mrs. Lewis looks, hey Cassie, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. What happened to you? You look terrible. Cassie says, well, I got this hook on my hand because, well, we were in a battle and uh, a cannonball took off my hand. Surgeon fixed me up, I'm okay. I mean, I'm fine, really, I'm okay. Mrs. Lewis says, yeah, but what about the eye patch? Cassie says, well, well, it's another story. You see, there was this flock of birds flying over our ship. Wow, those are some pretty birds. Oh, right in my eye. Well, I wasn't used to my hook yet, so I lost my eye. Oh, nice. So I don't think anybody ever understands that pirate thing. No. I guess uh, it's an inside joke. I don't yeah, think it was stays, code stay. for something or something. Anyways, uh, Jordan, you know how Jordan was? Him and his yeah. uh, driving, you yeah, know? Yeah, him and his man van. His man van, yes, it's real Sorry. nice. Uh, you know, of course he is the master at Mario Kart, but uh, <laughs> it didn't transfer over too well into his driving actually on the road. I can imagine. Yeah, one day uh, he, I got a call. Uh, there's, there's a story and it was saying, uh, yeah, his wife, called him while he was driving one day, down, driving down the road, and they said, honey, honey, you gotta be careful. Uh, the 15 freeway, there's a, there's a car on the freeway going the wrong direction. He said, honey, I, it's not just one car, there's thousands of cars going the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was a big, big story. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I don't think anybody can be Joseph, though. Man, Joseph was sleeping all the time. You know, I all think the, the only way he got to school was a sleepwalk. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and, and that didn't happen often anyways, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, he was telling me some of the top reasons uh, that work. When he falls asleep at work, he says, hey. I just said, hey, this is one of the seven habits of highly effective people. Nice. I hear when he wakes up from uh, sleeping at his desk, he just yeah. says, uh, oh, sorry, boss, I was testing this for drool resistance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another one is, I was doing a highly specific yoga exercise to relieve work-related stress. Yeah. Uh, one of them, he told me, he says, I wasn't sleeping, boss. I was just trying to pick up my contact lens without using my hands. <laughs> nice. Yeah. The other one, the, the one I think he uses the most is, Amen! Amen, hey, okay. yeah. yeah. It's like he's praying all the time. Which, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I heard some, uh, some good news from Kenny. You know, Kenny, uh, high school, he's always trying to dress nice or yeah. trying, at least. Right. Uh, but uh, I, he made the, a list of best dressed men. No way. Yeah. I was, uh, I was excited at first until I read the list. So the list includes okay, Dennis Rodman, yeah, Justin Bieber, yeah, Elton John. He's up there, isn't he? Kenny Houston. No way. But he barely beat out Rosie O'Donnell, though. Barely, <laughs> barely. All right. Man. He did make the list, though. So congrats to him. Some people get all the luck, huh? Yeah, all the luck. 
Yeah. Well, remember, Heath, man, when he was in high school, skinny as a rail. Skinny as a pole, I mean, yeah. Whew, he turned sideways, you couldn't see him, right? Correct. Boys, he ballooned since Yeah, he put on a little bit of pounds. A little bit. Yeah. Wow. You know, last Christmas, we were at a Christmas party, and I saw him. I took a picture with him. I'm still waiting for the picture to complete. Oh, right. man. Yeah, I heard he's so fat, he doesn't need the internet, because he's already worldwide, right? <laughs> yeah, like he broke his family tree so fat, right? Yeah, so fat that when he, when he fell down, no one laughed. But the ground was cracking up, all right? All right. Uh, he's so fat, the only ABCs he knows, well, the only alphabet he knows is his KFCs. Nice, nice. Yeah, um, I was reading through... You know, I was going through some stuff from school, and I found yeah. uh, some journals from Miss Bailey's class. Ooh. You know, she makes them write all the yeah. time. Yeah, I remember those days. So, uh, Brianna and uh, Jessica, I found both of theirs. You know, I thought they were smart mm -hmm. until I read their journals. So, <laughs> I found some entries from there. Here, here's one of them. It said, fired from my pharmacy job for failing to print labels. Duh, bottles don't fit in a typewriter. <laughs> no. Well, I heard she got excited one time because uh, she finished this jigsaw puzzle in six months. Because the box said two to four years. Wow. <laughs> yeah, one, one of the days she was really frustrated. She said, I got trapped on this escalator for hours. The power went out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's failed that she one. She babysits <laughs> a lot. So, I mean, how hard is it to make Kool-Aid? Well, she, she tried to make Kool-Aid, but she said she couldn't. She couldn't fit eight cups of water into those little packets. <laughs> Jessica, you know, uh, she loves chocolate. Yeah. At least she does now since the joke works for this. But uh, she said she hates M&Ms. She said they're so hard to peel. All right. <laughs> yeah. I thought these were really funny. They were when we were putting them out, huh? <laughs> but they couldn't call 911 because, duh, there's no 11 button on the phone. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, you know, Tim, I thought was the same way. I thought he was smart, but sometimes he can be a little bit dumb. Yeah. Yes, slightly. All right. Uh, remember that time he stayed up all night studying for his blood test? No? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or when it took him two hours to watch 60 Minutes. Yeah. Or I remember that. Or that time he put money in the parking meter because he thought a gumball was going to come out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but Michael, he's one of those guys always looking in the mirror. You know, he's like pretty boy type of thing. Gotta get the hair right. You no, know, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's so full of himself. He joined the Navy so the world could see him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just saw his new book. It's entitled Famous People Who Have Met Me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know, uh, and George too. George, uh, I mean, we could talk about a lot of stuff, but one of the things I remember, him being so loud. I mean, talking oh, yeah, yeah. all the time. Da, da, remember, da, 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 yeah, yeah, Brother Cable always telling him to shut up, no. you know, and all the time, uh, telling him to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, Brother Caleb would always do that. I don't know why. Anyways, uh, yeah, one day I, we went. Uh, we, I was taking him. We were going to uh, we're gonna go to a taco cart for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, uh, I was driving down the road, and uh, next thing you know, I see these, these lights in my mirror. I thought, man, what did I do? I look down. I'm, I'm not going fast. My, speed, my, uh, my uh, whatever you call this, what do you call this thing here? <laughs> Seatbelt. <laughs> Seatbelt. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. right. That's a different joke. All right. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, my seatbelt was on. And uh, the officer sir, do you know I pulled you over? And I said, no, sir, I don't know uh, why you pulled me over. And he said, do you know a couple miles back, some guy fell out of your car? I said, oh, officer, thank you for telling me that. I thought I went deaf. <laughs> well, <laughs> George has never, never had an awkward silence before, though. But he's never had any silence. Okay, that's correct, yeah, I yeah. Mean, He talks a lot, but he never says anything. Correct, exactly. Yeah, uh, Billy, yeah, I, uh, I heard he's really into, like, uh, was it Harley, Harley Davidson? Harley? Davidson? Yeah. Harley. Uh, maybe I got lost in translation. Maybe, maybe they're just saying, know. I don't remember what it was, but uh, something like that. I just remember how redneck he was in high school. I don't know if he's still that way, but I remember, uh, I remember one time him and his girlfriend broke up. Uh -huh. She said, yeah, they could still be cousins, though. <laughs> uh. Uh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that was my favorite. That was my favorite. <laughs> Well, you know, I was thinking, you know, you know why redneck murder cases are just so hard to solve? Why, why are they hard to solve? Because all the DNA matches and there are no dental records. Nice. <laughs> hey, I know our time's running short, but remember those awards that they gave out at graduation? Oh, yeah. Those? I still got mine. You got yours? Yeah, yeah. The white what? The what? Okay, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> I, remember, uh, I remember Jordan's. Jordan was the most likely to overdose on junk food. Yeah, yeah. Jessica, most likely to become a fashionista. Fashionista, yeah, either that or a bum killer. Yeah, always kicking bums, huh? That's a whole nother story. But uh, <laughs> Brianna, most likely to become a sandal model, something like that. Oh, yeah, Kenny, Kenny was always working out, and so he's got 
The Got Milk Award. Got Milk Award. See how big he got from that. Uh, yeah, Heath, remember that scholarship he got from, uh, uh, what was that? Uh, WNBA? WNBA? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah. The bad thing is. Yep. Sorry. And Tim, God, something like the Cherry Bowl Award. Yeah, I, I never, I never figured that out. Me neither. Cherry Bowl? Does he like cherries or? I don't know. I didn't. Okay. I never, I don't know. Next. Uh, yeah, most, George, uh, most likely to succeed at a taco cart or to become the next doctor. Who? Yeah, ex exactly. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Cassie was most likely to become a pirate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Joe was the emphasis on almost perfect attendance award. Almost. You know, we should have given him the entrepreneurial award for that business he started down. Remember that yeah, tour bus business yeah, in, in Mexico? Minana tour bus or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, we should have given him. <laughs> like, <all right>. My <laughs> Michael gets the GQ award. GQ award. And Billy gets... Uh, the biggest belt buckle in California. Yeah, but they're... They're, they're always big bigger in Texas, Texas right? Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Anyways, I uh, appreciate your time. Thanks for coming today. We do want to let you know this graduation is brought to you by uh, Fred's Outhouse Service. Their motto is, we're outstanding in the field. In Ralph's Sewer Service, where we believe a straight flush beats a full house. All right, thank you. <laughs> All righty. Uh, at this time, uh, we're going to do some of our Friends of the Academy Awards. Uh, our school uh, it could not operate if we didn't have lots of volunteer help. And we have people who we could list. We could, I could have a couple dozen people up here uh, who invest a lot of time. Uh, this year, we had to pick out three. And uh, so I'd like these folks to come, if you would, to the platform. Uh, Andy Kampalas. Angie Verstra and Mitch Pearson. Amen. Would you come up, please? <laughs> I'm not sure if they knew they are coming up, so we, we like surprising them. You can come on up over here, if you would. <clears throat> I'll start with Angie, because yeah, she's probably going to hit me if I don't get her out of here soon. <laughs> Uh, uh, Angie is uh, another example of why it's good for your son to go to Bible college. Yeah. Uh, my wife and I have talked about this often. If, if the price of going to Bible college was to get the spouses that our children have gotten, if that's all they got, it would have been worth every penny. Uh, and uh, her husband, Jared, went off to Bible college, and I don't know how. She must have been in a weak moment, because she said yes to him. But we could, I could have, <laughs> literally, I could name you a bunch of fellows in our church who've come back with great wives. And Angie is certainly one of them. Uh, she's uh, a real bright gal, and she's assisted Mrs. Bailey uh, in her English classes all year. And we really emphasize a lot more writing this year and composition, and Angie was a big help with Mrs. Bailey. And she was faithfully here helping out, and she's just a, just a great blessing to our young people. So we have an award here. It reads, for her willingness to give many hours helping our students in the English department, we honor Angie Verstra as friend of the academy today. Thank you, Angie. Uh, next is Andy Kampalas. Um, Brother Andy, he, he has a few children. <laughs> uh, obeying the first commandment, amen? Uh, and, uh, thank, and his children are excellent students, not just academically, because they are excellent academically, but just very good spirited young people. Uh, as a result of him having uh, a few extra than normal, he has this great big van <laughs> that he lets us use anytime we want to use it. And transportation can be a real issue for all, all kinds of activities that we, we do and sporting things. And um, he's just always there and always helpful and always ready to be a blessing. And we wanted to honor him today. Um, and it reads, he has been the, the aspirin for our athletic transportation headache by repeatedly loaning his van. So we're going to honor Andy Kampalas, friend of the academy. And last is Mitch. Uh, 
Mitch comes down uh, to the school a lot to help uh, Mr. Jefferson. You see those two walk up and down the halls. Because when you have a whole school load of young people, they break a lot of stuff. <laughs> and things wear out and, and uh, Brother Jefferson and Mitch, they do, <laughs> anyway, I, I was thinking of, oh, we probably should have his wife Karen up here because she lets him come down and spend hours and hours and hours and hours coming down and helping us. So we wanted to honor him. Uh, it reads, since facility maintenance rarely receives recognition, and because he has spent many hours repairing our school, we honor Mitch Pearson as friend of the academy. And our graduates now have a song they're going to sing. memory video here right now.
righty. We uh, have some graduates who are going to read the uh, composition to you. And so we'll start with Tim Peterson. Dear Mom and Dad, I have no greater friends in this world than you two. I've often thought if I was asked who my favorite teachers were, I would say my mom and dad. If I was asked who my biggest supporters were, I would say my mom and dad. If I was asked who taught me the importance of a true walk with God, I would say my mom and dad. If I was asked who my heroes were growing up, I would say I've never admired anyone in this world more than my mom and dad. Thank you both for getting me to where I'm at today. I could not have done it without you. Now, as I'm about to head into the next stage of life, I will do my best to take what you have taught me the last 18 years and apply it to the way I live. I've always hoped that maybe someday I will be as good of a parent, husband, and Christian as you both have exemplified. I love you, Mom and Dad. Your son, Tim. Graduation. Today is a day of joy, a day of bittersweet emotions as I stand in front of you all, my mother, my father, my peers, and family. Wearing my best clothes and having prepared my heart for this day of celebration, I realize that today means much more than graduation. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for all the sacrifices you've made for me. Dear Mom, don't cry. Today is the day your little girl graduates from high school and enters a new phase in life. As I look back, I thank God for the parents he has given me and all the great leaders he has put in my path. Dear Daddy, I love you, and I know there's no one more proud of me than you. Dear classmates, don't be afraid. Stand in what you believe and let God be your anchor. No matter how far the future may take us from home, it will never take us away from our beliefs. Trials may come, but we must take what has been taught to us and face our fears. Today we stand, we cry, we hope, and we dream. As we begin the next part of our journey, remember we are not alone. This is not farewell, but if we must leave, don't worry, because we will be back. God has been good. For 18 years, my life's been simple, not a trouble or a care. Things seemed so easy when I was little, and my parents were always there to hold my hand and guide me when I was feeling scared. But now all that's behind me, and the world before me stands, full of darkness and uncertainty. But fear not, I have a diploma in my hands. So now at last, after all these years, I'm leaving the past because the future is here. It is a time for laughter and a time for tears. Now I'd like to thank the person who most helped my journey here. She carried my greatest burdens and vanished all my fears. I would not be here without you, Mom, and I hope you're proud of me. I'll see you soon, and I'll stay strong. For you, I'll be all that I can be. All right, well, that Pastor Goddard come and say a few words, preacher. All right, I'd just like to take a moment and uh, think about the graduates here and their families. And uh, if you don't know, uh, obviously everybody doesn't know every other family, you know, your own, but uh, there's a lot of, uh, just like across the room, we could pick any segment of this auditorium and we could find uh, endurance and um, struggles and economic pressures and battles and uh, health problems and you know you just take any two or three pews and you'll find such diversity of challenges and that's what's behind me this this afternoon uh, young people who've been through a lot and uh, some of them have been through things that none of us would wish they'd have to go through but we don't get choices we get what God puts in our world and we have to make some decisions about it and uh, I was looking at those pictures to this idea they were showing up there, and I thought, there's one thing we can say about this senior class. We have diversity down. Okay. I mean, well, there's a, you just look at those pictures, and you think, is there any, anything common among that group? And there is. It's Calvary. About the only common denominator in this group uh, besides the fact they think they have, they all think they have the best pastor in the world. But, but that, besides that, um, the only thing common among them is they care about the Lord Jesus Christ. And their life has represented that. And I believe that typifies our school and our church for that matter. There are people in this room and people that will be here tomorrow morning at church 
who, were it not for Christ, their paths would never have crossed, number one. And number two, they wouldn't have liked each other because we're just so different. But you put Jesus in the middle of it and suddenly we have such a common bond that all the differences become just slight peripherals and nothing significant. And though it uh, take us to uh, football fields or basketball courts or science and history fair, um, all the things that go on in high school, senior trips and uh, sporting events and academic pressures, the one thing that has allowed this class and uh, the, the things of our church to, to tie tight is Christ. And as long as we have that, then that closeness will always stay there. To the young people this afternoon, I'd like to say a couple of things about the word hope. Um, you, you graduates are our hope for a nation that might maintain a balance between work, love for God, family values, and decency. All of those things are greatly under attack in America. Work is attacked, a love for God is attacked, family values are attacked, and common decency is attacked. You young people are our hope of going out into society and bringing us something like that. You're our hope for the future churches. The young people behind me, all of them worked in Sunday schools. There's a list in your bulletin of things that they did in the program for graduation. They worked on bus routes. They worked in Sunday school. They worked with children. They worked teaching and, and shaping other lives. But every one of them worked under some adult leaders. And you, you graduates this afternoon, I just would say you are our hope. Where are we going to get the bus captains when the bus captains that taught you are gone? You're our hope that the children in kindergarten right now would have some bus captains to guide and direct them. You're the hope that somebody would be your coach uh, I mean, the coach of the next generation. You're our hope that somebody would teach Sunday school. I just think, how many people taught these young people in Sunday school? But when you're older, who's going to teach the next generation Sunday school? See, it's not just about us. You, you graduates are our hope for the next generation. You're our hope for a society that still has morality. You're our hope for a world. Where are we going to get preachers? Where are we going to get missionaries? Where are we going to get Sunday school teachers? If not from our young people. Those who taught you graduates stepped in and helped make your life worthwhile. And you can choose to follow a path of selfishness like the vast majority of America, or you can choose to be our hope. Thank you, preacher. We're going to find out who our valedictorian is here. Uh, but we always do second place first. <laughs> no one ever remembers who second place one was, but it was pretty competitive this year. Very, very, very close. Uh, within, uh, oh man, about, uh, I don't know, maybe a hundred thousandths within the top three. Um, our salutatorian with a 3.935 grade point average is Cassie Card. <laughs> And our valedictorian with a perfect 4.0 grade point average, Brianna Patton. Congratulations. All right, preacher, if you want to come up here, we're going to give our diplomas away. And they'll, they'll stand next to preacher to his left and they'll take a snapshot if you'd like to uh, get one of those. Morgan Elizabeth Idlet. <laughs> Cassandra Lan Card. <laughs> Jordan Andrew Carlson. Joseph Paul Cleary. <laughs> Kenneth Thaddeus Houston. <laughs> Heath John McMahon.
Brianna Marie Patton. Timothy Robert Peterson. John Michael Rubio. Billy George Schechter. Jorge Andres Servan. Jessica Agra Tamayo. All right, that'll, that'll do it. Uh, okay, we're going to turn our tassels so you all stand up back here. All right, this is the class of 2014. Graduates will be up the hill of the upper building. There'll be refreshments up there. They each have a table, a memorabilia table, if you want to drop off a card for them. Um, also, parents, uh, report cards and honor rolls. You'll see your child's teacher for that. Thank you for coming today. Have a great day.